welcome to Holy Spirit Lutheran Church, West Bloomfield, Michigan. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. We join in our confession and forgiveness. The psalmist said, Then I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Let us confess our sins with confidence, trusting in God's mercy. Together we say, God of grace and love, you created us in your image and gave us every good thing. You asked us to care for your creation, and instead, we've done things that put it at risk. We use not what we need, but continually seek more, never satisfied with what we already have. You gave us freedom to make your own, our own decisions, but so often, like Adam and Eve, we make the wrong choice. We succumb to the temptation of power, prestige, desire. Whatever sparkly thing is before us, we are blind to the harm we may cause others, thinking of ourselves, failing to consider the greater good. Help us see the world through your eyes and to act accordingly. Amen. The psalmist also said, Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Friends, believe the good news. We are forgiven. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. the free gift of grace in Jesus Christ, the reconciling love of God, and the life and peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and you say, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join in singing our Kyrie. Thank you. 
The first reading is from Numbers, the 21st chapter, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By Christ you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our gospel acclamation. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Holy Gospel is from John chapter 3. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up, so everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him would have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So if I were to ask you to name a Bible verse, how would you respond? I think most people would say, well, John 3.16. 
That's easy to remember. That's a favorite of mine. I mean, it's the perfect, perfect verse to put on a bumper sticker or a football sign or a t-shirt. Martin Luther called this verse the gospel in miniature, the golden words of Scripture, the little Bible. Author Max Lakatos calls this verse an alphabet of grace, a table of contents to Christian hope, each word a safe deposit box of jewels. Precious stuff. No doubt about it. So why then are we putting such treasures on the bottom of a bright yellow shopping bag? At the stores Forever 21, teenage girls fill those yellow bags with the latest fashions. Discreetly printed on the bottom of the bags is John 3.16. No scripture verse, no reference. And according to Forever 21, the inscription is a demonstration of the owner's faith. Now, they're not alone. There are other companies out there, Christian base, who are attaching similar things to their products. The California burger chain, In-N-Out, also uses John 3.16. It's on the bottom of their drink cups. But one has to ask, does this marketing work? We may like to think that these citations cause people to open the Bible and read the verse or verses. Or is their impact fleeting? A moment of recognition followed by business as usual. And in most cases, these verses are going to catch a customer's eye for just a second before being crumbled up and thrown in the trash. Is this really nothing more than in and out scripture. Something more is needing, needed here. Reading the Bible verse itself is not going to do it. It's not just you saying that or just saying this. This is the Bible. Hearing the word alone doesn't cut it. Jesus said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. I mean, kudos to those stores like Forever 21, in and out. But the next step must be taken. Something more is needed. An action aligned with the power of the verse itself. What is needed is sacrifice. I mean, look at John, John chapter 3, 14 to 15, the verses that precede that infamous verse. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up, whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So in order to save his people from the deadly venom of poisonous snakes, which, by the way, the Israelites brought on themselves because they didn't trust God, Moses was told by God to lift this bronze serpent up on a pole. Well, in similar fashion, to save all people, from the sting of sin and death, Jesus allows himself to be lifted up on a cross. That's a real sacrifice. God makes the sacrifice as well. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God did not so love the world that he sent a flowerly like love note. No, he gives his son. That is a true sacrifice, a sacrifice that has impact. Because God did this, everyone who believes in Jesus may not perish, but have eternal life. Everyone knows that actions speak louder than words. And that's why the death of Jesus on a cross and the sacrifice of God's only Son continue to resonate so loudly 2,000 years later. What do we offer that's going to hurt a little? What core values will we defend, even if it hurts a little? What are we willing to give up or give out in order to do the right thing and be the right person? Maybe an evening a week as a tutor for an English class for recent immigrants, or an afternoon 
with a teenager in need of mentoring or a visit to someone in a nursing home or hospital or a consistent percentage of income to God's work in the world. These are starter ideas. Each person has to make their own choices. Such actions as this will demonstrate that we're not just in and out as Christians. The good news, though, is that God desires our salvation, and he sent Jesus into human life in the world not to condemn it. In fact, it says, indeed, God did not send the Son to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. If our own sacrifices had to rise to the level of Jesus' sacrifice, there would be little hope for us. But all God asks is that we put our trust in Jesus, that we believe in him. But here's the tricky thing about this belief. It can't be in and out. If we're going to put our faith in Jesus, we have to be all in. Like poker players, we need to go all in, bet everything. Think about it. If you trust a person just a little bit, you may as well not trust them at all. Would you jump out of an airplane with just a small amount of trust in the parachute? I don't think so. People who trust in Jesus are willing to lean on him and organize their lives around him. That's why Sierra Trading Post, which is a mail order company for lovers of the outdoors, prints a bold mission statement in its catalogs. Our business ethics must be consistent with the faith of the owners in Jesus Christ and his teachings. We invite you to write our founder and president, Keith Richardson, and what if what we do does not match what we believe. I really like that. David Rupert of The High Calling likes this approach. He says, the president of that company admits Practically speaking, no one would change their faith views based upon two sentences. On the contrary, he said, the purpose is to hold me accountable for upholding Jesus' injunction to treat others as I want to be treated. The purpose of this faith statement is not to proselytize or offend. Instead, it is to hold the president and the company accountable. If they're not treating customers the way they want to be treated, let them know. If they're not doing good, speaking the truth, acting with integrity, let them know. So in order to plant the gospel deeply in people's lives, we need to sacrifice, trust in Jesus, and be accountable. These are the actions and attitudes that will have an impact for the Christian faith and draw people closer to God and Jesus. That's all in Christianity, not in and out. Let us pray. Dear God, we know that so many know John 3.16, at least that part. They may not know the actual words of the verse. But we need to know the words as well. We need to understand why it came to the point it did in saying, for God so loved the world. We need to study your word. We need to understand your word and apply it. And we need also, Lord, to show it. Faith without works is dead, says James. We must be doers of the word, not just hearers. Help us to do that, to be that for others. In your name, amen. We join in our hymn of the day for grace. You have been saved.
let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, ministries of service in your name. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nature nurtures springs and growth that feed hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort all who mourn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up so that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful Lord, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Drawn to the Light.